Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are gonna be creating these really cool home decor items that you could use around your house for the fall. We are going to be watercoloring, watercoloring, painting, painting with watercolors today. So if you would like to follow along, I'm gonna show you the supplies that we're gonna use. I bought these at Dollar Tree. They were quite the value, especially for something that is just a watercolor and we're gonna be making it really quick. It's just for the fall, it's not nothing super crazy, not a commission, not a anything, just kind of like a personal thing. Next, we're gonna be needing some pencils. I happen to have these. I've had these for forever because like I said, I don't even know if I said, I really, I really enjoy watercoloring and I'm a digital artist, but I also like to watercolor as well. I actually learned how to watercolor after I learned digital art, which is a very strange journey. This is what I use to do my watercolors on. This is the only brand that I will recommend for any type of watercolor acrylic painting things. Canson is amazing. Am I even saying it right? Canson, Canson, amazing, amazing paper. This is a really old watercolor thing I was working on a long time ago with one of my friends. We would have days together where we would just watercolor. Obviously, I never finished that painting, which is sad. The paintings you can actually see up here are actual watercolors. This is an actual finished result from one of those paint days with one of my friends, and I painted the Tangled Castle, and I think it came out pretty cool, pretty good, pretty nice. We need the brushes. These brushes, I, I don't know what to tell you about, right? I don't know what to recommend for brushes because I am somebody who can make anything work with anything. So I make these brushes work for me. I think I bought these at like a Joann store. I used to have this really cool brush where you would put pressure on the brush and it would squirt water out because there was water inside of it and the water would come out with the color. It was really cool. I need one again. I have, I've had like four in the past. I just, I couldn't find them for this video since the move and everything, so I don't know if they got lost somewhere. The last thing you're gonna need is obviously the watercolors. I believe it's a Windsor, it's Newton. I don't know how to pronounce the name correctly. So sorry. It's this really cool travel case and mine is really dirty because I've had a lot of uses and a lot of sessions with this specific one. I have like four of these in my closet just in case I need some more colors because as you can see, my colors are kind of messy and everything, but that's kind of how I enjoy painting because what's the point of having something too like strict? I also have these, these are trays and they actually fit into this, or they originally fit into this and you could shut it, but I like to keep them out because it saves history with the colors you use and I also have a lot of history saved with these colors. So I will definitely be probably reusing some of these colors, especially the reds, the browns, um, because with watercolor, it is super cool. You don't have to clean it off immediately after you're done, kind of like acrylic, because it's water activated. So if I put water onto this right now, I can actually use this pigment still. It's pretty cool. And I don't have to worry about it drying up because it's water activated. With that said, let's head over to the workstation. <laughs> All right, step one is getting our workstation laid out because there is gonna be a lot going on here. I'm left-handed, so I keep everything on the left-hand side of my workstation, my paints, my water, which we will be talking about in a second. I also forgot to recommend having a X-Acto knife because we are gonna need to cut our piece of the paper. So I guess we can kick this off with step one. So I took our little photo frame template and I kind of traced around the edges and with the ruler to kind of create some little templates here that I can use my X-Acto knife to cut out. I'm gonna start cutting my photo frames out, but just a recommendation. If you're gonna be doing this, I would recommend using actual cutting mat. I don't have one currently at the moment with me because of the move. So I'm using a thick cardboard box. Never, ever, ever use an X-Acto knife on your table. You will ruin the table. You will destroy it. Just finished cutting out my frames and I would like to reiterate again 
Do not use your X-Acto knife on your table. Either use it on a cutting board or on a thick piece of cardboard because as you can see here on my cardboard box, we have the indentations of the X-Acto knife. We're almost at the fun part now. I promise you, we just have a few more things to set up. This water cup is gonna remain clear throughout the duration of this painting. This water cup is going to be where we rinse colors out and add new colors. The purpose of doing two separate water cups is essentially the clear water is going to be used for a mask, which we will be using at the beginning of the painting, and the water with the color in it will be used to mix the colors. The last thing we need is some tissues and some paper towels, and we are ready to go. Now we're at the fun step of actually drawing and getting everything ready for the paints. I do not take too long personally on this step. I kind of just block my shapes out, get everything out super fast, and then I start to add the colors in because there's no reason you should be detailing this drawing because it's just gonna get painted over. I'm also not gonna keep my lines this dark. I'm gonna take my eraser to it to lighten them. You can actually find reference photos of anywhere for leaves, whether it be online or if you actually get a real leaf in person and trace it, totally fine. As you can see now, I'm just kind of lightening the lines and erasing the lines, getting ready for the color. Now, what we are gonna do right now is a very crucial step. We are gonna take some water onto a brush, get it wet with some clean water, and we are gonna bring it over here. Now, I only want you to paint the water, yes, paint the water in the leaf area. I know it's a little bit hard to see, but we can see it right here, just watered down. Now we're gonna take our paints, get it in, get the brush wet again with the colored water brush, rinse some more in, and then we're gonna come back over here and we're gonna just start dabbing it around and it's gonna kind of diffuse out this really cool technique. And I would actually use a bigger brush than this. So I'm getting a big brush, I'm just, Getting in some colors that I really like, you know, nothing too particular. I know it's a lot easier said than done. And then we're gonna come back over here where it's gonna kind of boom, 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 boom. And just like, yeah. Once you have your dabs down, you can kind of just honestly blend everything out for right now. Because look at that beautiful hard edge. I love those hard edges. But um, right now we're kind of just trying to get some color all the way around. You know, we're not trying to be too careful. We just want to get the shape in there. And look at that. And then I will kind of force smooth things out naturally. And just let the water do the work for me. All right, now when you get to a state where you're kind of like, oh, I still have things I need to fix. I gotta fix this, I gotta fix this. That's kind of the time when you just kind of have to just stop and you have to let the watercolor work its magic because I can guarantee you when it's dry, it is not gonna look like this. It's gonna look completely different because right now there is water in it and it is active and it's activating the pigments. And as soon as that dries, everything's gonna be sucked out. So I think we're at a pretty good stopping point on this one. There's enough texture. The lighting will change depending on how you view this later in the day with different lighting. It's a very strange thing with watercolors. So if you're painting it in the daytime and if you come back to this in the nighttime and if you have your house lights on, it's not gonna look the same. So I would try to get all of your painting done in one session. These spots that look imperfect, that look really textural, those are gonna look really beautiful once it dries. And that is honestly the beauty of a watercolor. Drawing out my second leaf shape and I'm starting to prep the paints. And just remember, make the shape cool. Don't really worry about the line work because we're gonna go over it with paint. The stems will also be the last part of this project. So let's go again with our clean water and let's go back over to our sketch and let's kind of outline the sketch in water. Now I wanna make this version like a darker yellower painting thing don't know what type of yellow i'm going to use yet because this yellow is too extreme but this one's kind of cute so maybe like yellow orange and possibly brown we could all mix together to kind of make like a really nice yellow ish color like a yellow fall color possibly and we can have like a gradient going 
uh, darker to lighter. That's what I'm thinking for this one. I just need to put a little bit more yellow pigment in here because I kind of darkened it too much. I'm kind of liking this color. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go in again and we're just going to dab things around. We're going to swirl things. We're just going to have fun, not be too stressed out about anything. This time, however, I'm going to go from dark to light. So I'm going to add some more color into this, some more brown to this down here. The colors in this one are actually turning out pretty cool and they're kind of already gradating by themselves, which is awesome. So right now I'm including some brown and I'm gonna kind of like blend it up. Maybe this one we won't go to as detail as we did for the first leaf. Maybe we can kind of keep this one as is, you know, that might just, that might just be what it needs because it's looking really nice right now. These are coming out so beautiful. Once the stem is added in, it will just, all come together and look so great. As you can see, the water is kind of like diffusing out on each of them. So I'm just gonna let them be. I'm not gonna touch them. I'm gonna work on the third and we're just gonna just wait it out. The stems are pretty big on these. I'm gonna shrink them when I actually paint the stems in. So I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I have our third sketch ready to go. I'm dipping in the water and what are we gonna do? Yeah, we're gonna just kind of go over it with water to get everything ready to prep everything. Might have put a little bit too much water. This mix, I'm kind of going for a green color, which I, I think would be pretty cool. I mean, we don't have too many green leaf colors. So we're gonna kind of make this ugly looking green and we're gonna keep adding some yellow and some orange to it to kind of dull the color down until we find something that we like. And I think this could be a, possibly be it. And generally like, you know how we do, we go in and start just dabbing things around. I kind of put water on the stems this time. That's completely okay because I know it's gonna be okay. There's a little bit too much water going on up here. So what I'm gonna do again, I'm gonna get my tissue and I'm gonna kind of suck all the water up. And you can actually see the water moving pretty cool that is the pretty cool thing about watercolor that a lot of people don't know about and get frustrated with is how to i guess maneuver around the water and get it to work for you this is also a pretty cool technique so since we do have some water on here we can actually tilt this and we can kind of see all of the water shift it's pretty cool and that's kind of what i like about watercolor this one just needs to dry out now because it looks really nice and a lot of cool color things going on over here. There's like yellows and there's greens and everything's super wet still. That's why it looks kind of dark and dim and dingy. We're going to start adding the stems. I'm going to make them super small. I'm actually going to erase that because I don't want that to be the expectation of the stem size. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of like I don't want it to be too straight, but I don't want it to be too crazy. But we can always start thin and add thickness, you know, as we go through. I think that works out for our stem size. I'm running it up the leaf and I'm not really worried about making sure it all kind of connects. Because in real life, it's okay if it doesn't. And it's gonna be pretty nice no matter what we do to it because we already have like this really cool foundation down i'm gonna hit up the third one and just kind of gently go into here i wish i could have moved this one slightly over to the left a little bit because it's right on the right edge i'm gonna clean everything up now while those dry and then we will frame them also a little psa these will look darker than they actually will be in like an hour. So just let them, let them stay. Don't keep adding a darker color. I'm excited to be putting them in the frames. This is how they came out. Absolutely beautiful. I love this one. This is my favorite one. This one came out pretty cool too for being like, you know, just a basic little leaf. Nothing too special, but I do like all the colors that are going on inside the leaf. I'm probably gonna redo this one because it's a little bit more to the right than I would like it to be. But other than that, it's pretty nice. 
I hope you all enjoyed that cool little DIY video and I hope you can follow along with those steps and I hope you can make some pretty cool things as well. But anyway, thanks for watching and hopefully I can do more videos like this in the future because I had a lot of fun making this.